Research on global health must never stop. So the scientists here in the Eukaryotic Pathogens Innovation Center are um, uh, dedicated to understanding some of the most devastating and intractable diseases of humankind. These diseases include African sleeping sickness, fungal meningitis, amoebic dysentery. Uh, some of these diseases are also neglected tropical diseases, and those are uh, diseases that prevail in tropical or subtropical environments. They affect over a billion people, mostly people living in poverty, and they cost um, uh, developing economies over a billion dollars a year. Globalization, ease of travel, uh, climate change uh, is, has resulted in some of these diseases being present now in the U.S., where before they were um, confined to tropical and subtropical areas. So there's a local impact. So hopefully what we learn um, is going to help you know, eliminate or reduce some of these diseases. Well, a lot of these diseases share similar common pathways. So one of the goals of, of EPIC is to identify drug targets in these fungi and parasites. Since the fungi and parasites are related to things like malaria, what we learn and the targets that we identify in the organisms that we work on in the Eukaryotic Pathogens Innovation Center can then be applied to microbes that cause malaria. Uh, these fungi are also threats to other immunocompromised patients, not just patients with HIV, but those that are taking immunosuppressive treatments, such as uh, individuals who've had heart transplants or heart-lung transplants. Well, there's no other places that we're aware of in the United States and that study a mixture of eukaryotic pathogens. Our group studies both parasites and fungal. So basically we study any kind of or eukaryotic microbes that cause disease. Although EPIC maybe doesn't deal with the types of diseases that the general public may be more familiar with, we still deal with diseases that cause millions of deaths per year worldwide. Um, so what we learn about those diseases can then be applied to these other diseases such as malaria, for example. This COBRE grant is going to allow us to um, establish a legacy of scientific inquiry. Um, we've set up a mentoring program uh, in, this, in this grant that's going to allow us to train the next generation of scientists. And this next generation of scientists include um, uh, junior scientists, postdoctoral fellows, graduate students, and undergraduate students. We collaborate with uh, folks all across campus, and so we have specific collaborations with um, faculty in biochemistry and chemistry and physics. The shared infrastructure, first of all, in the life sciences facility really facilitates that. It really facilitates teamwork, um, informal uh, peer mentoring, mentoring of junior scientists. I think one of the things that makes our EPIC COBRA unique is that we have mentoring not only happening from senior faculty on campus, but we've gone out and sought some of the most well-funded and brightest researchers that we could to serve as mentors for individual faculty. So each individual faculty targeted investigator faculty member has two external mentors uh, that they can interact with throughout this whole process. So the undergraduates who have worked in these labs have gone on to the very best graduate medical schools in the United States. Uh, and some of them have stayed in this field. And other students who have come out of these labs are staying in the biomedical area. Um, our graduate students take the best postdoctoral positions, whether that be in academic labs or in government labs. Uh, one of my previous graduate students has now moved on and working in viruses. Uh, uh, which is something that we don't really focus on here in EPIC yet.